this is the $3 SSD that got us so hot and bothered that we had to post about it on social the other day. This thing came into the lab in an unmarked box looking highly suspicious, and now that I've seen it, I'm even more suspicious and more angry that we have this. And I'm angry because it's one of our Discord users, Infinity Tech, that sent this to us, not telling us it was coming, just showed up in an unmarked box from an unmarked delivery service from an unmarked van, and it's very, very shady. What is it and why am I so upset? Okay, first of all, it's a SATA SSD from the household brand everyone knows and loves, Golden Fur. Not F-U-R-F-I-R, -I, I don't know what it means. It is though, however, a 120 gig SATA SSD that is ready to revolutionize your world and that's because it is a $3 SSD. $3 for 120 gig, is that a value? That's the question. If it goes into our rig and it tests fine and it works fine, then there should be no problem. And 10,000 people have bought this thing on AliExpress according to the stats, if you can believe those. But the big thing is, is what's inside? Is there a real controller? Is there a real NAND? There's probably no DRAM at $3. There's definitely no DRAM at $3. And even what is the NAND? On the spec sheet, it says it's QLC, MLC, TLC, and SLC. So who knows? It could be an extravaganza inside this case. We'll dive into all of that. In the first social video too, some of you guys got a little salty that I was so pissed off over getting this drive in and then being forced to review it just out of uh, Ohio statute code that says, if you're the leading storage review company in Ohio, you must review all storage that comes into the lab. I'm not an elitist when it comes to SSDs. What we are though is realist in terms of, is the $3 even worth it if you can't trust the drive, if the drive fails, if there's potential dangerous software on here, we just don't know. So while we're not down on the $3 exactly, it's the overall package that has us somewhat suspicious. What we're going to do is take this drive, the $3 drive, and unfairly compare it to this guy. This is the Kingston DC600M. Clearly, we haven't even cracked it open yet, and so while I expect it to be tremendously more powerful and a better performer than this turd, uh, we don't know. Maybe Kingston's Entry Enterprise SATA drive can't live up to a $3 drive. Now this guy at $960 goes for about $99 online. It'll go all the way down to 480 gig if you need a small one. And at that capacity, this guy runs about $78. So, but we've got what we've got in hand. We've got the 120 gig for $3. We've got 960 gig Enterprise class SATA for $99. Is this 33 times better than this drive? I'm betting it is, but let's throw it in the rig and find out. We've unbagged the one SSD and unboxed the other and slammed them both into this Lenovo SR635 ONE U server. This has been a super stable test platform for us, plus it's got Linux on it. Kevin was really paranoid about running Windows on a system with this unknown Golden Fur drive coming in because who knows what could be lurking underneath that case. But now they're in the rig, we're gonna fire them up, see what they do, and get back to you in terms of whether or not the performance of this $3 drive holds up the way we all expect it to. All right, so we spent all weekend testing both of these drives to see how they would stand up when Kevin gave them a little bit more of a rigorous treatment. If you were on the live stream last Friday, you saw this stuff streaming across in real time. But as we cut to the CDM benchmarks here, we can see the Kingston drive on the left and the $3 crap as Kevin labeled it on the right. And at first glance, it doesn't look that bad. And that was to my grave disappointment. I wanted this thing to be pure trash from the jump. Sure, it weighs 0.2 ounces compared to much heavier metal case in this drive. Sure, it's $3 and that should just signal terribleness. And then even when we cracked it open, it wasn't super terrible. It was just really terrible with its ripoff controller and marginal NAND. But when we get here and see that it actually looks okay, I was devastated because I want this thing to suck and I want that Infinity Tech guy in our Discord to pay for it. But here's the reality. After this lightweight testing that just does a single pass over, and actually on this, in the video on Friday, what we showed was when we moved to a larger test set, the Kingston drive, when we went to the 64 gig file, the Kingston drive finished the entire test before this piece of turd could even build its test. But Here's what's really interesting. As we go to our more intensive VD bench testing, which fills up the entire drive, which is pain in itself for an SSD, especially for a terrible one, then we really get to understanding the characterizations of the performance. So look at the random read 4K, we've got the Kingston drive out here at uh, 80,000 IOPS or so, and this guy hits a hard wall at about 15 and a half. 
That's not that bad. Terrible, yes, but negotiable, I suppose. As we switch over to 4K rights, we can see this line here is nice and tidy behavior from Kingston, offering really stable write performance out past 70,000 IOPS. This, this is not good. This looks like a cactus, and that is really, really bad. So for context, we could test this drive against an SD card and it would be faster. And what's even worse is if you look at this spike, the, this is latency in microseconds. 140,000 microseconds is 140 milliseconds in latency. That's awful. Let's go down and make a coffee and come back for your data kind of awful. And this is just random write 4K. As we look at a little bit larger block file sizes, we get to 64K and see the same behavior where this thing at like 50 megabytes a second drops out, hits a wall. Kingston as expected, enterprise drive, nice and tidy line. And then we get to the 64K sequential rights and the same thing, Kingston, nice tidy line. This thing skitzes out and does uh, 50 milliseconds latency or more, which is absolutely terrible. But to prove how terrible this drive really is, if this isn't enough, we went back to Crystal Disk Mark because after you write this thing a couple of times as part of the VD bench testing, then we see how the drive does with things like garbage collection and taking trim commands and things of that nature. So we fired it back up into CDM and check this out. As you can see, when we go to the system to try to refill the drive for a CDM run, it was going at 5.2 mega second. It's so slow that it's barely even measurable. And honestly, when we think about this performance, you'd be better off buying a cheap USB drive, a SATA DOM, boot off a SD card or a micro SD, do anything you want, but do not buy this drive. Yes, it's sub $3 from AliExpress. And I understand you super cheap home labbers have some sort of fantastical appeal with this thing, or you might just be extreme storage degenerates that like the pain that comes with a drive like this. Either way, don't buy it, stop it right now. There's many, 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 many better solutions as the aforementioned SATADOM USB stick or micro SD card. We cannot recommend this, we will not recommend this, and I don't even know if we'd give this away for free in one of our box of crap drawings. So stay away from it. Please don't send us any more of these things. And Infinity Tech on Discord, I curse you to bit rot. It's dead.